Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Good morning. Mike Crutchfield here this morning with Your Daily Dose. Um, in verse verses 18 and 19 of the Revelation, we see a warning about changing, adding to, or taking away from Scripture. We know further that all Scripture is inspired, so there are no misstatements. Those who penned the inspired Word of God penned exactly what God wanted said without error. Uh, what I want to talk about is in part why there was such a harsh con a condemnation for anyone who would would alter God's word. So what I want to talk about is, is, is what's in a word, what's in one word. Now there was a time when I was not as adamant or dogmatic about my advocacy for the King James Bible. Uh, most of my life I was not inclined to study God's word and was even more carna, even more carnal Christian than I am today. I made a statement once before in a daily dose that, it, in my opinion, one of the greatest pitfalls to false doctrine is a willingness to accept any book that says Bible on the cover as the Word of God. Now, while yet today I am not well read or knowledgeable of scriptures, I've read and compared enough in recent years to know that the King James Bible is the inspired word of God and that I have not found any other translation that I would call the word of God. I think people get tired of hearing me constantly advocate for the King James Version, but if I truly believe what I say and I want to do what we are called to do as Christians, then I have to advocate for the King James Version to the exclusion of all other so-called Bibles. If I'm going to say to a new Christian that he should study the Word of God, I should let him know where to find it. I also have to recognize that some will tell him that it doesn't matter which translation you use, so I must be prepared to defend the King James Version. Now, there's all kinds of ways to show other translations in error, but I want to talk about two that really, to me, stick out like a sore thumb. Um, now, this is a subject that people don't talk about very much because it sometimes upsets people. Um, now, it's interesting to, to consider that there are different things in the Scripture, in the Bibles, about, about reading, okay? about reading the Bible. Deuteronomy 17, 19 says, And that shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord, his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statute to do them. When you study the churches in Revelation, you see that all who read and hear the words of the prophecy are promised a blessing. Revelation 1, 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now there is, however, one and only one verse in the Bible that does all, that does all that 2 Timothy 2.15 does. And does it all in one verse. This command is not duplicated in any, in any other epistle. No place else are we told to study? Now, I know that doctrinally, doctrinally, this was Paul's letter to Timothy, who's being prepared for ministry. But the Great Commission was given to the church, and so it applies to us all. 2 Timothy 2.15, most are familiar with this verse, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, the, the word of truth. This one verse, one verse, 
uh, alone tells you not only to study, but why you should study and how to study. When you consider the makeup of the sentence, you see that rightly dividing is something that you would do as you study God's Word, so we can be safe in believing that the word study was the right word, it was the right u word used for the, uh, for the context of the sentence, what was being said. In addition, we know that dividing is translated from Greek orthotomio. Today, it seems like uh, many like to rely on the, the NLT because it's so easy to read. But what's it say? It says, work hard. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Now, I don't think it makes any difference which modern translation you use. You'd be hard-pressed to find one for which the translator thought that God was telling you to study his word. They don't use the word study. Uh, particularly found it interesting that the, the New King James Version translators as well felt that the word study should be redacted and replaced with be diligent. Be diligent. Paul was telling Timothy to study we are to study. Now you can ask yourself why these translators perverted this verse, but God does not misspeak. He doesn't need to be corrected. We don't need a new KJV. The KJV got it right. I did find one other translation where I found the word study, which was the Tyndale. Now that's a study unto itself. Uh, now the other verse, the other verse that I want to talk about is John 1.12, reading John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Now compare that to the NLT. But, uh, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. As you see in this translation, it simply contradicts itself. If we have believed him, believed and accepted Christ, we have already accepted the free gift and are already children of God. The perfect sacrifice gave us the ability or right to become children of God, which we did, so now, as children of God, we have the power to become sons of God. This and other modern translations totally pervert this verse and destroy its meaning. By perverting this one, one verse, by changing sons to children. Now, there, there, there's so much in Scripture for which it becomes impossible. By just changing this one word distorting this one verse, it's impossible to rightly divide and things become hidden. Now just, just to point out a couple quickly, look at Mark 12, 25. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, neither they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Now, look at, go to Job 38. In uh, Job 38, verse 4, he says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. When the, in verse 7 says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, these sons of God spoken of in thirty-eight Job thirty-eight seven are angels. The angels were referred to as sons of God, and they were present 
when God laid the foundations of the world. Now, look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. It says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So these sons of God are clearly fallen angels. And if you study further, you would find that when they came together with humans, they produced giants. These are the fallen angels that are spoken of in Jude 1, 6, which says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of his great day. And so, in a proper context of John 1, 12, which says again, But as many as received him, <coughs> pardon me, to them gave he the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, we see that by accepting Christ, we have already become children of God and are to become, as the angels, sons of God. But changing that one word, sons, to children, the verse was destroyed. And the ability to properly divide and reconcile that verse to, to understand other scripture. Now, lastly, I just say this. If, if you look at some commentators, <clears throat> they will distort and that uh, where it uh, says, uh, speaking of sons of God in Genesis, they, they will say that these, these uh, sons of God uh, were men in the line of Seth and the daughters were women in the line of Cain. Simply not true. Uh, the uh, <laughs> line of Seth was never a, described as a godly line. And so you, you can see how, how this uh, changing translation and all, uh, messing up the translation, how, it, uh, how we can get false doctrine from uh, corrupted, corrupted scripture. Heavenly Father, thank you for this ministry. Thank you for Faith Baptist Church. Uh, Lord, uh, bless the service this, uh, this coming Sunday and every service, Lord. We just uh, pray, for your, pray for your blessing on Faith Baptist Church. In Jesus' name, amen. This has been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.